Link dropped his iPhone from a roller coaster in Florida, and he called me in North Carolina to find it. Hi, I'm JB. And I'm Steven. And we're in Taos, New Mexico. Let's, Let's talk, talk about, about that. that. Good mythical morning. Today's episode is brought to you by Smule, maker of musical apps for the iPhone and iPad and other mobile devices like Magic Guitar. If you want to turn your iPhone into a guitar and play some of your favorite songs, get the Magic Guitar. Thanks for joining us today. Indeed, it's a mythical morning. No matter what time of day it is, all we ask is for 10 to 12 minutes. You know, you can be doing something else while watching slash listening to this. Cooking. Or, or any, any number of things that we don't need to list. Reading a book? Well, that would be difficult. And if you need to take a break from what you're doing, you can just, you can, this is a perfect opportunity to do that. Yeah, come take on, Take a break people. from doing what you don't want to be doing so you can do this with us. Well, Thank you. Welcome those of you who are breaking from something. This week, uh, this past week, I had a bit of a mishap. I was out getting some props for an upcoming video, and I left one store, I left Joanne's Fabrics, because we buy a lot of fabric for videos. Oh yeah. You would not believe how many pieces of fabric 80 we 80% of our budget is just fabric. And uh, I get into the car, and then I come back here to the studio, and I realize about halfway home, I'm kind of, I'm like, where's my, where's my, where's my phone? Where? Usually, I have it like out for like navigation or whatever on my lap and it's not there and I'm like checking in my back pocket. I actually stopped the car halfway home. In the street? In the, well, I pulled to the side. I get, I look like a moron. I'm kind of stopped right there next to all this traffic on Ventura and I just get out and I'm on my knees next to my car because I'm a big man. I got to get down low. And I'm like looking under the seat. I'm grabbing around the seat. I I cannot find my phone. The drive, you were down in the driver's seat like that? No, I'm, I'm outside of the car with my phone. Face People are driving by and they're thinking, uh, that's not how you change a tire. Right. It's up the, the spare is in the, the trunk. And so I can't find it. He comes he comes back in here. I've been I've been working. Rick busts back in the door and he's like sweaty and pale and panicked. He said, I've lost my phone. Give me your phone. And I'm well, like, I'm, I'm like, sh- I'm sure it's in the car because I remember bringing it with me to the car. And so I don't I'm not going back to Joanne's to see if she's got it. She doesn't work there. So you come here and you get my phone. And so I go to the car. I call my phone. With my phone. And I hear, I hear, I'm like, oh, thank goodness. It's in the car. I have to call the phone five times before I can locate the phone. It turns out it was in this little, little piece between the seat and the the, it's the, the iPhone console. catcher. They call that the iPhone slot. It's so frustrating. P- car manufacturers don't put a slot there. The phones get caught there and you can't find them. You know but what? It you reminded know what we, us. Oh, it reminded us. It, it reminded us of a more spectacular phone story uh, from Link's past. Now this, I guess Spotted this, past. This happened uh, maybe summer before last when I took my family to Walt Disney World and then we also went to SeaWorld which is like right across the street. But you stayed back and you worked in North Carolina. Of course, and I gotta then keep the, things going. But then the next week you did take a vacation. Oh, that's so right. we offset so we could keep keep the Retin Link Entertainment cogs turning. But anyway, um, we go to SeaWorld and I said, okay, Christy, today is about the kids and about the sea life. But I only ask for one thing. They had this new roller coaster, which they are, they said it was amazing. It's called the Manta. Heard of it. And I said, listen, the kids can't ride this thing. I, all I ask is right when we get there, we're gonna get there right when it opens, I'm gonna go get on this roller coaster and then you'll just wait and then it won't take much time, I'll get my one piece of enjoyment in that yep. way and then it'll be about the kids. Got it. So we go through there and mission accomplished, there's no line for this Manta. And I'm, you know, I'm running through, it's a long, long turnstiles and stuff because the lines are gonna get long and I'm, you know, I'm running through and switch back in on the, on the turnstiles and there's nobody here. And is this I'm, the ride? I'm, no, this isn't even oh, the ride. You're making this it is, sound so exciting. I is, thought you are on the ride this already. This is where the line would be. Okay. And I am excited. All right. I feel fulfilled. So, whoa, 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 whoa. And then I get up there. I didn't even have to wait. Boom. I get right on the ride. You sit down and then all of a sudden, even before you go, this thing goes, and it lifts up your butt and you're and like flying. So you become horizontal. It's like you're hovering underneath a manta ray. I've done that. And in so the Bahamas. I get, I, get, I, get on, I get on the ride and shoo, the thing takes off at an amazing speed and I'm doing loops and I'm I'm just I'm just thrilling myself you, you, to death. You, you act like you're in control. You you're, you're, I'm doing loops and I'm going <laughs> you know you're subject to whatever they program well, the coaster. I was having to do. a lot of fun. I was okay. having so much fun 
that I didn't, I didn't, I didn't you feel. You thought you were in control. Whoa, well, it's my apparel. I think I'm feel. controlling it. Loop, so, it loops. So whew, all these loops, and they get off the ride, and I have to meet up with my family, so I go out the exit, and as I'm going, I do what I've trained myself to do, and I give myself the pat down. Oh yeah, you know, self pat down, self self pat down, and just making sure wallet's there, keys are there, phone, 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 phone. up, oh, panic, 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 no phone. I get out, and Christy and the kids are waiting there for me, smiling her face. She says, "How was how was the ride?" And and I said, "Well, it was pretty thrilling, but I don't think it was worth two hundred dollars." Which it was probably worth. Four hundred dollars or whatever an iPhone is without a plan, because that you would have had. Yeah, the replacement cost was even higher, so I would have been even more ticked off if I'd have realized that. And so she was like, "What?" And I was like, "I've I lost my iPhone on this ride." Now, I get a phone. Call. No, no, no. To keep in keep in mind a couple of things. Okay. First of all, I knew I had no case on my phone. I knew my phone was dead. Out of principle, I never bought a case. I said. It, the, the phone itself is a case of the inner workings. Why buy another case to go around the case? That's logical. Ironically, if I'd have had a case, it probably wouldn't have slipped out of my my pocket. Because of the And grip. then the second thing is, eighty percent of this ride is over water. Yes, the Manta Sea World. So I just knew it was gone, but I go back in and I'm going. I'm going through the line. Excuse me, excuse me. I'm not riding the ride. I'm just looking for my phone and as I'm going I'm encounter sign after sign after sign that I blazed past when there wasn't a line that says remove all your valuable items and then it starts listing things like 85 cell phones are found a week on this ride and I start to feel like such an idiot by the time I get up there I'm almost too embarrassed to ask the guy uh, but I did anyway uh, have you seen my phone <laughs> and he laughs in my face he says of course he does that's just, what I would have done just go talk to the lost and found it was a lost cause so you go to lost and found Obviously, it's not there. Of, of course. It's in the water. So, I get a phone call from Link's wife. She doesn't call me very often. When she calls me, I know that it's probably an emergency situation. Mm -hmm. And so, she calls She calls me, but it's Link on the other end of the line. And he says, I need you to do something for me. He's fr obviously frustrated. He says, I've lost my phone, and I, but I've got that find my iPhone feature turned on my phone. So, mm -hmm. I need you to log into my, at the time, mobile me account where you can go in and you can look on some GPS and you can find out where this thing is. So, first I of said, all- I said, listen, I know, I know you're not gonna find it, but just try. Because it's in the bottom of the try. lake, right? Well, anyway, so I log into Link's mobile me account. Or splattered against the sidewalk. And I click on find my iPhone and lo and behold, ding, 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 ding. It doesn't make that noise, but it showed that it was somewhere in Orlando, Florida. Orlando, I don't say and, Orlando. And if you zoom in on, so I said, okay, Rhett, zoom in. And he said, well, it, they didn't take an aerial photo well, of SeaWorld or I something? Wanna, I want to tell you what I had to do here. I, what I had to do is I had to go on Google Maps and I had to bring up the hybrid view so I could see the satellite image and I could see the map image. And then I had to go to SeaWorld.com and bring up the park map of SeaWorld. To cross-reference the two. And I cross-referenced all these things and I was like, I mean, I am like a scientist sometimes. Like 99% of the time, but this was, I was peaking at this point. You're like an oceanographer. Yeah. And so. Because it is SeaWorld. I dived down to the surface and I actually saw your iPhone. No, I didn't see your iPhone. It doesn't work <laughs> like that. It's not a live I was. I, I said, your iPhone is on one of the grassy island areas of the ride holding up the roller coaster. Yes. It's in a grassy area. So I go out there and, I, and I'm on the phone and he's like, go to your left, go to your right. And then he's like, it should be right there. And then I look and there's a chain link fence and I can't see anything in there. Yeah, they're not let, gonna let you inside the ride because well, that's I how go, people get decapitated. I go back to Lost and Found. I'm like, listen, I've, my friend has located my phone. This is where it is. They said, well, we can't, we have to wait till after hours to, to unlock the chain link fence, to turn off the ride, to go in there and, and fish out the, the 20 cell phones that were, that were lost today, including yours. So I was like, well, I'm not gonna be here, blah, blah, blah. So I just go back out there and I'm like, I wanna make sure there's nowhere else. So I'm, I'm that creepy guy at SeaWorld who for an hour was like in the shrubbery. <laughs> I let like the SeaWorld gardener, just like in regular clothes. Just like but, looking at the roller coaster? Like, uh, the rides are over here, they're not in the shrubbery. Maybe this people thought you were like an ins a ride inspector. Gotta get a good look at the bottom of the structure to see if it's still intact. Yep, check. The gardener actually came up to me and said, lost your phone, huh? I was like, yeah, on the, on the ride. It's like, happens about 80, 85, 85 times a week. 85 times a day. It's like everybody knew. 
But but I was able to. I, I was looking at the the feature there on the mobile me account. I was like, Link, I can send a message to your phone, so your phone will display something. So I wrote, "Hello, my name is Link. I'm an idiot." And I dropped. No, I didn't say that. I actually wrote, "If cell phone is found, please call." And then I gave him your wife's cell phone number, which you had. And then I get a phone call. Hours later. From me. It was confusing. I was like, what? I'm calling myself. What? Yeah. It's like the self pad down. Hello? What? And it was the guy at the Lost and Found at SeaWorld. Sir, we have found your phone. Um, Somebody just came and turned it in. And it wasn't, it it had, the person had said it had hit the sidewalk and nothing happened to it. It was not cracked. It was not broken. It was not, it was not compromised. So it fell outside of the ride. Except for the speakerphone didn't work anymore. Oh, that's a bummer. And uh, so there you go. Moral of the story. Moral of the story is, you can, don't don't put a case on your iPhone, and definitely put the phone in your pockets when you ride on the mantra. Right. Or is it? The, or is it the mantra? <laughs> it's not a. It's not like a. <laughs> the mantra. Uh, the mantra, Ray. Uh, and you repeat, man, mantra, mantra, mantra. I will not lose again. my phone. I will, I will not, not lose, lose my, my phone. phone. That's I the mantra you say while phone. on the mantra. Woo, we're having All fun right, today. How are we going to end this episode? Link is Godzilla. It's a, okay, you know, this God, is interesting. Godzilla man. came out of the sea, and I happen to know the sound that Godzilla makes. You can be, um, you know, like scared a scared person. A scared person in the uh, in the movie. Okay. It's not, it's not really that scary. It doesn't sound like it. Am I supposed to be scared? <laughs> Scream. <laughs> yeah, that's good. See you tomorrow. <laughs>